they did this TV movie about Elvis, okay? And so Kurt Russell was uh, mentioned to Don Carpenter that he kind of wanted to be a space cowboy. And I think the reason why he wanted to be a space cowboy was because Han Solo became so popular from after the Star Wars film, okay? So they kind of like – he had this idea of an, uh, this uh, – this uh, idea of escape from New York, but before Halloween, he couldn't get it made. After Halloween, they was like, okay, you can get this thing made now. And so they did it very cheaply. They did. Uh, they went to Roger Corman for help. The matte paintings that are done there are done by James Cameron, who at the time was working for Roger Corman. And so St. Louis, though, had just been burnt there around the Ferguson area there. Uh, it was totally on fire. And so it created a great dystopian society for 1980 for them to film this. So they filmed it there. The fight scene was filmed at Union Station. Yeah. What? That's awesome. Yeah, the Dude. fight the fight scene was filmed at Union Station. So all this uh, comes about. We got the space cowboy. We got a guy who's wanting to try to just distance himself away from Halloween. See so, you, space cowboy. Right. So we collaborate together, and we create this escape from New York. At the same time, a road warrior is being made, too. So kind of this, uh, since Repo Man, people were kind of, like, looking for the whole dystopian and uh, a po- post-apocalyptic future. We're not going to get into the difference between dystopia. So basically, and- in the '80s, everyone was depressed because the '70s were over. Uh, no, everyone was scared of nuclear bombs. Let's let's just face oh, it. Oh yeah, uh, you yeah. know that's real fair. Right, and and I'll tell you, there's a true story. I knew kids that were scared about it. You'd be out there playing. Uh, they get oh no, one of these days, uh, Khrushchev is not Khrushchev. I can't think Brezhnev was going to hit us with the nuclear bombs, and you get upset. And so everybody had that on their mind. So that's where you get Escape from New York, Mad Max, and Road Warrior, all those guys. So uh, basically, like I said, John Carpenter's trying to distance himself from Halloween. Kurt Russell wants to be a space cowboy. So boom, there you go. All right, so Escape from New York, guys, what the heck happened? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, movies, movies, what, what happened is that out. Rambo met National Treasure met Fallout 3. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. That was terrible. All right, so... It, so, basically, it was bad, except for, like, three bits. <laughs> Essentially, the, the, the outline for the plot of, of both movies, honestly, is, uh, you know, just insert, insert location here. Um, St. Louis. Is all of New York slash L.A. Slash St. Louis. Is, <laughs> slash St. Louis is a prison. We're all in prison, guys. There you go. Yeah. Um, oh, that, that's been my dream. And, like, all... <laughs> Another fetish video has been made. Children? Mm-hmm. Basically... <laughs> Basically, the vibe that I got from both of the escape movies was, in a world, <laughs> like, because, like, like, you got Snake Plissken, who's basically, they mixed Rambo with with Big Boss, and it didn't really work. It worked, but it didn't work. Uh, can, can we talk about uh, Metal Gear Solid for a moment? Can we just talk about Metal Gear Solid for just one moment and say how they ripped Snake off? From these movies, it, am I not wrong? Am I not wrong? Am I, mean, I not wrong? I mean, his, name's, his, his name is fucking Snake. And the thing is, is like yeah. um, Solid Snake. I'm gonna be real with you. Right. Solid Snake is a better character than Snake Plissken. Ten times over. Yeah, but like then just the concept that was there. You know what that, makes me so from, mad is, and I don't know if it was like an O to the Metal Gear Solids. Remember, he Stacy Keach gives him the matches. Oh, no. Yes. So it's like, I'm hoping that he got money for the whole snake thing. I'm hoping that Carpenter got a big, fat check and was like, yes, sure, whatever. And I'll tell you, give you an idea what I I got theories about John Carpenter. Okay, so like Rob Zombie was remaking Halloween, and so he calls John Carpenter up. And you got John is a smoker, okay, first of all. He likes to smoke. And so, you know, Rob Zombie's like really excited. You know, he's like a little boy in a, you know, play shop or toy shop, whatever, or sex toy shop. And he calls, uh, you know, uh, John Carpenter up to tell him that, hey, I'm going to do your movie and everything. And like, you know, Rob Zombie in his way, he's like, hey, John, I just let you know I'm so excited. I'm, I'm going to do your movie and remaking it and everything like that. And this is John Carpenter on the other end of the phone. 
Um, good luck with that. <laughs> that was it. And I feel that Snake is basically John Carpenter. All right, so let's talk about cartoons for a moment. Everybody is a cartoon, number one. Understand this. To understand this, Kate, maybe everyone's a cartoon character. Over-exaggerated character. Number two, everybody is an <laughs> asshole. There is no. no good guys in the entire film. So, And I feel like with Snake is like so... Uh, what you would call, he's so cynical. So he's like a cartoon emo boy. Then you have the government who's like a cartoon state police place. And then you have oh, Chef. Com- comically dictator. Dictatorial. Exactly. Co- comically dictator, dictator, whatever. Anyway, this stuff is supposed to be over exaggerated. Then you have the Chef, which is the comic, you know, underground thing. The whole idea is, my feelings with John is, here's his theory, and he's trolling us. He's trolling everybody. These films, are made to be bad, okay? I'm pretty, yeah, I am almost yeah, 100% right. certain but here's, that John Carpenter's yeah. specials in so bad, it's it's good. He's right. If, if you want to say his pinnacle, if I th- his opus, if you will, I would say is Thing. That's where he wanted. That's where he wanted. That's where he'll go. That'll be it. But for these films, I see two things. John is a Kentucky boy, and I believe that John has, is too... Liberal for Kentucky, but too conservative for Hollywood. That's my opinion. Yes, That's precisely. what I think these movies are about. And precisely. If you prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Lucas, go and continue with the film. <laughs> I like Vampires by John Carpenter. That, that I, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, those are his westerns. Okay, if you take Escape, you take Vampires, those are his westerns. That's fine. I understand the John Ford thing. Oh, if Caleb, you got the floor, you go ahead, man. Run with it, man. <laughs> Run with this film. You know, okay. it's... Man. Uh, let's think. Okay, so, the president. Yeah. Now that guy. Yeah. Who's unfortunately not Morgan Freeman. Dr. No. Loomis. Yeah. They hadn't caught on to Morgan Freeman being every president. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Well, to say that I, I really wish that this movie also had Will Smith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and featuring Will Smith? I guess that's the same thing played by Will Smith. Just, it would definitely... <laughs> okay, real talk, the star that I would have would have wanted to see in this movie was Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Cage would have been a perfect Snake Plissken, but instead he picked this asshole. Yeah. <laughs> If it have Jackie Chan in it, I'm out. Oh my god. If they had just randomly shoehorned Jackie Chan in, it would have made the movie like ten times better. Yeah, a random prisoner in New York. <laughs> random prisoner is Jackie Chan for no reason. <laughs> Cause listen, if you're if you're already going to be over the top ridiculous as they already are, you might as well throw in Jackie Chan. Yeah. Go for it, Caleb. You were you were saying <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> yeah. Let's give Cam. Let's give Cam five minutes here to talk about. It. Okay. Uh, and then okay, and then in the sequel we had the president's daughter. So they basically cut and paste the exact same plot. And they take the exact man. Let's age him up a bit. I also love that that's what they thought the world was going to be like in 2013. 2013. Yeah. yeah. In the second one. I believe it was uh, 1997 in the first one is what the year was supposed to be. Uh, Yeah, obviously it's nothing like that. So (laughs) uh, anyways, let's see here. What else did they cut and paste from both movies right into? Well, I mean, the obvious, you know, all of this is a jail. Uh, we're looking for said person on a time limit. Yes, they do something yeah, where he's yeah. got a time limit. He's going to die if he doesn't do his task. Yeah, the first one, they injected, like, things into his, like, his arteries here that were going to explode or whatever. And the second time, there was some kind of virus, I think. Was that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there was, like, yo, you're going to die if you don't do this now. So, yeah. We really didn't get creative on that part. Uh, and then in the first movie, the cabbie, they had the cabbie, and then they had a, who was the driver in the second movie? I forget. Steve, but they had you see me. Cut, cut and paste driver character. Just, hey, uh, Robert De Niro. 
right. we're going we're going th- I'm going to throw it over to P now, and we're going to talk about uh, Doctor Loomis slash presidents in these films. <laughs> P, go for it. I'm throwing the spotlight on you. <laughs> You're nothing, huh? You've got nothing from these presidents. <laughs> Um, oh, oh, you, you, me, okay. Yeah, yeah, P. <laughs> if you want my attention, call me Naga. Okay, Naga. Okay. Um. So, the presidents, dear fucking God, okay. <laughs> Real talk, at this point, politically, we are living in an escape movie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All of the United States! <laughs> All of the United States. Because, like, here's the thing, is that uh, they just decided to take the concepts of the, the comically tyrannical dictatorship that that a lot of America thought that China was back in the day. It still kind of is. But it wasn't nearly as bad as they are juxtaposing it in these movies. And the thing is, is that, like, they just thought, oh, yeah, no, in, like, 20 years, America's going to be a police state. Which, I mean, they weren't wrong, but it's not quite to that degree that 90% of people are in prison. And we got to have some asshole like Snake Plissken going around shooting at the popo because he's the only one who's got the balls to do it. And it's like, are you freaking kidding me? America would not place their faith in one individual. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> The presidents in these movies are not only like comically tyrannical, right. they're also comically incompetent. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, they it. constantly have their finger on the big red nuclear strike button and otherwise have absolutely no personality. That perfect cartoon. And again, like we said, he... I am going to say, I'm going to throw this out for, for me. I think he was ahead of his time and really you don't, you would get it now in 2020 with, uh, with bird epidemic and Sharknado and, uh, all these stupid <laughs> films. Don't even think out we started there. a birdemic. We'll be all day with it. <laughs> I, with all these stupid films out there that are made or trolled to all these made to be bad, good films. This film would be at the height because it's like, like you said, these are cart, everybody's cartoon and that's the bottom line. And it's like, yeah. uh, and the thing is too, like I said, John Carpenter loved money. So the question is, why would he make these films? <laughs> because they obviously be, be, listen, the, the main draw of these films is that they're bad. Right. And the, and the thing <laughs> is, is though the only reason why the second one gets made is because the first one had great video sales. That's the bottom line. Cause yeah. this film flopped in the theater. It, it just like. He wasn't it, planning on making it for the theater. He's planning on making it for VHS for people to eat popcorn at home and laugh at it. Yeah, exactly. And so when you did watch they make the, the third too? Or? No, they did not make a third, thank God. I hope they did. Yeah, thank <laughs> fucking God they didn't make a third one. But, but. It would have been like, it would have been like Escape from fucking San Antonio or something. I don't know. If they make a third one, I will yeah. buy a copy for each of us. There's, Escape I mean, it's bad from, enough that the second movie was just like, oh no, there's only one city in the entire world. Escape yeah. from Lucas's place. <laughs> All right, escape so escape from the Big Apple Sauce. Escape from Sad Boy Clubhouse. That's what we call it. <laughs> escape from Sad Boy Clubhouse. <laughs> oh no, you're not wrong. <laughs> All right, story time. I gotta have story time. We always have story time here, so can I? Have story oh, story time? time. Story time. All right, so let's go back to VHS. There was these things called videotapes. And you could go to the store and rent them. And you always, the girl was really cool because she was like your mom. You, you always respected her because she didn't tell on you if you like rented letter the goddess of Phobos and also escaped from New York. So you could go up there and it's like, you know, that's what you would do. Cause I was like, 
well, man, now that I'm single, I got my own bachelor pad. I can start renting my own movies, right? So I go down to the local uh, store. Of course, I, I, I get my laundry done, order pizza at Domino's, go to the video place, get my video and all that kind of thing. I said, I need to start watching science fiction. So I got, you know, like the typical escape from <laughs> New you York. Pick the worst possible science fiction. Movies. Right. Yeah. Light, uh, <laughs> the one with, uh, you know, all, all the old ones because I never seen them before because I didn't have like grow up on cable and all that stuff. I was in a small town. We didn't have a cable. So, you know, you got, uh, escape from New York, uh, you know, uh, what's another sci-fi that was there? Maybe, maybe like, uh, Sorcerer, Sword and Sorcery or something. And then maybe later for dessert, you'd watch Whipped Cream Babes from Hell or something like that. <laughs> Mars Needs Women. Mars Needs Women. You go home, you watch these things, and you, and it's like, I did not, I completely forgot about this film. I watched it on videotape, forgot about it. Now everybody's like doing reviews on it, talking about it like it's a great opus and all this kind of thing. And Alex is going to talk about the villains. Oh, man. <laughs> Alex, you don't know the villains. No, I don't. I've never Alex didn't it. watch the movie. Alex yeah, is just Alex didn't watch here. The movie. Yeah. All right, Lucas is going to talk about the villains. <laughs> oh, God, okay. Oh, he's got some opinions. Look at him. Villains. Rocky. Uh, Rocky. About about what villains specifically in this in this movie? You got Chef, and then you got uh, the, the fake the Che Guevara. Guy. Okay, can we talk about the basketball scene? That's great, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> the way that it was just shoehorned in for no That's reason. The only like thing I can even like recall of any kind of bad guy in either of these I... movies. All I remember is the the one snake guy going around fucking shit up and just. Well, everyone was bad in the movie. Yeah, yeah they were okay. all bad in the movie. Yeah. All right, but you you got car- – now, listen. Let's focus on the villain. You got cartoon Che Guevara, all right? <laughs> then you have cartoon chef who's uh, – Then you have J. Jonah Jameson. Right. <laughs> Anyways, any of those – the Duke? The Duke was the chef. Yeah. Chef was okay. Duke okay. from oh, South Park. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I was going to say his chin You're not the wrong. Car. That and was great. Pretty- full-size disco ball hanging from the rear view. Now, children, yeah. I'm going to be shooting the presidents right here. Right. <laughs> they very fashionable violence, I'll tell you that right now. Like, oh, you can, I will, have you guys had some of uh, my sweaty balls? But anyways. <laughs> so they put them on display to be killed in the first yeah, the sweaty uh, balls? Like, the, the, the president's <laughs> sole role in the movie was to be an incompetent leader and then die about three quarters of the way through the film. <laughs> Y'all number one, Duke. Y'all number one, Duke. All right, so smack. Okay, cartoon. Okay, Lucas. Let, let's let Lucas have the floor now. Let my star have the floor. Okay. Here. All right, so don't push Alex. It hurts him. I'll see he's, you guys later. He's running errands. Uh, oh, he's yeah. running errands. All right, A jelly candy. Jelly candy. All right. All right. So. All right, so Lucas, you got the floor for the villains. We have Chef and, of course, uh, Cartoon Che Guevara. And let's go. I don't, I, don't remember, I don't remember anyone but Duke, who was Chef, apparently. Right, exactly. You remember? That guy. What? Yeah, nobody else was important. I like Duke because he was cool. But, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, wait, was the, I think I remember the other guy. Was the other guy in the other movie with the. Yeah, Cartoon Che Guevara. Okay. Yeah. All right, all I remember from that dude. Is, is um all I can remember is the president <laughs> got ass naked against the wall with a suitcase. That's is, is it wrong of me to only remember that? Yeah, you remember that. But this you, was a wild movie. Okay, I I, did, I was not very good. I've, I've been sick the past like week, so I'm like in and out of like dying, and I'm like ooh naked president thing. <laughs> the. Well, uh, Caleb, could you Caleb, could you help Lucas out on the villains a little bit? What do you What do you remember about about villains besides the Duke having a sweet ride? So in the second movie, I was confused. Was it a man, or did they deepen the voice of that woman? Did they deepen the voice of that woman. Okay, I was, okay. It was a yeah. big deal for me. I, I thought so. 
All right, I children. So. All right, all right. Now listen, children. That was Pam Greer. She was a very important star in the black ex- exploitation era. But no, you guys don't know because you weren't born yet. You were like, oh, I'm going to stay in my mom's womb until these black exploitation films are done because I am not watching them. And you know what? I am disappointed in all of you, but go right ahead. That's the best excuse I could come up with. That's oh. it. That's the next thing I could come up with. All right, so... Pam Greer, still hot today. Hmm. Oh, is that- you're, you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Hey, 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 uh, hey, 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 Pam is Pam Greer. This well, is I, Foxy Brown. You must Brown. keep in mind that I am a horrible homo. No, but. but <laughs> this is Foxy Brown you're talking about, all right? You're talking about. Foxy Grandpa. Foxy yeah. Brown. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I'm drawing right. together. Hey, oh. I'll do anything for my love. All right. And then, okay, so uh, which Foxy Brown in this film, like, yes, they did deepen the voice. They did a pretty good job because, like said, Caleb, you had difficulties understanding that that was dubbed, right? Yeah, at first. Yeah, at first. <laughs> at first. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, so where were we at? We were talking about the villains because, like um, – Let's talk about, um, and 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 the whole thing is: Were you thinking that he was reaching for the gun or for the little Pam Greer? Which oh, one? dude, I thought he was totally just like, yeah. Okay, I, first of all, full hands on boobs, like immediately. Okay, before <laughs> get okay, your hands off of me. Like that. The guy who looks like Pavi from Repo the Genetic Opera, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that scene, that scene should have been punctuated with just the cartoon character. Bruce Bruce Campbell was great as the cartoon surgeon. Remember, he was the Surgeon General of L.A. And that and I really like that was a good character. Yeah. I, I, I and you know, I I just finished watching Escape L.A. for the second time. I really think it needs to be watched again for. I was started laughing at the dialogue because I realized this is supposed to be funny. And when you think of it being funny, it is hilarious because uh, when they mentioned the thing about the these are freaks of nature who gone through so much plastic <laughs> surgery and all this and now entering the the Surgeon General of L.A. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's about right. That's L.A. for you right there. <laughs> there you go. Of course, can I? Of course, P and I, I are thinking about Cedar part? Sinai. Oh God, please don't call us. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So go, Luke. <laughs> I, want to, I want to share my favorite part of this movie. Okay, when it was uh, over? Huh? When it was over? Besides that. All right, okay. <laughs> okay, my favorite part of L.A. movie. Was, uh, whenever he was about to get in a gunfight with like these four or five other dudes, and he was like, alright guys, I'm gonna throw this can in the air, and we can't draw until it hits the ground, okay? And he like, throws it up and he shoots them all and it hits the ground and he goes, draw! And I'm like, and Caleb, yeah, that was fucking awesome. Only good part of this entire movie. Yeah. Well, the only genuinely good part of the movie, not the movie that was, not the part of the movie that was intentionally bad, but it was good anyway. <laughs> it was cool though. I really liked that. I was like, that's that's great. That's great. Th- th- there you go. That's that's Snake Plissken's character in one scene. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got I, I to ask Caleb this. I got I, I got to ask Caleb this. I, I, let's say if you were a twelve or thirteen year old boy, and you watched. Either one of these two, what would be your feelings towards them? Ooh, that's tough. That's real tough. Yeah, I mean, because obviously I you're different from the 12 or 13 year old boy that you were. <clears throat> I know, I'm just going by what Lucas has told me, but I, I honestly, yeah, I, I probably would have liked a lot of a lot of parts of it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Because if I was see, I watched this when I was an <laughs> adult, right? And so it was like, uh, okay, it's another dumb action film. You know, just throw it over here with the pal of the rest of them with the Van Damme movies. So, um, but if I was like 12. Wait, wait, wait. Did you just say Van, Van Damme. Damme? Jean-Claude Van Damme? Yes, him. 
We've been fighting about this for the past, like, week. I swear to God, that's not an actual name of an actual person. And oh, we cannot find him on the internet, and it is crazy. He is the, uh, was Muscles from Brussels. So, 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 I, I see what you're saying there, Kayla, because it's like with me, you know, if I, here's the thing is like, like this movie came out the same time as Raiders. And I was like really, really young. My mom took me to see Raiders and it was the greatest thing I ever happened to me. And I believe that, uh, it was a peak of Spielberg's and, uh, Lucas's, uh, career i don't think they can go beyond that i mean that's the reason why you get the vomit afterwards you get the you know lucas just counting his cash not you lucas but you count your cash too but uh george lucas just counting his cash going and where they go like yeah look at that (laughs) this is well that's that's why that's why george lucas decided to take on the star wars fucking films yeah exactly i mean bottom line it was like you know like when he how did because like i said hey guys i got a full copy of the star wars holiday special so i'm hoping we'll get together to do that all right oh so so masochism yes exactly but lucas is like sitting there in 78 and they're like hey we want to do like a star wars special and he's like Okay, that sounds good. 100, 200. Yeah, we were going to like have Princess Leia sing 300, 400, 500, 600. <laughs> and then we're going to have like B. Arthur in it because you know how the kids love B. Arthur. 800, 900, 1,000. Yeah, that sounds good. And he just signed off. And it's like, so then Raiders happened. They really challenged themselves when they did Raiders. And I feel like Escape from, like say Escape from New York was like, Kurt kind of, I think he was a little bitter from losing that road to Harrison Ford. Because can you imagine all the money he's not getting? Right. And, yeah. and Carpenter, like I say, was trying to distance himself from Halloween because here's a guy who's like, he's big in Lovecraft. He loves H, uh, you know, H.P. Lovecraft. He's not really wanted to be a slasher type guy, but he was the only way to get his film made. Because, I mean, like, the the separation between him and Dan O'Bannon, because you understand, like, Dan O'Bannon is a great writer. The only connection between Bannon and Carpenter are strip joints. And we'll get into that as well. But uh, Bannon, you know, was a good script writer. And so was Carpenter was a good script writer. They went to film school together. They came out and did Dark Star. But it was like uh, Carpenter wanted to, like, make a career out of film movie. But Bannon was like, I want to make a career, but I don't want to compromise my artistic behavior. And so they were like, Dan on Bannon was like, you know, don't change this, don't change that. And Carpenter was like... I just want to make films, dude. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so the money comes... Kept... just like, I'm just going to throw fucking artistic spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Well, basically, he, he got to get paid. And... He got to get paid. And, like, the thing is, is that there was a huge sci-fi craze in the early 80s. Right. So, of course, he had yeah. to he had to go full, full fuck with the dystopian setting. Yeah, and I, I can see Kurt Russell getting him all excited, too, because he's like... Hey man, I, I want to be a space cowboy. I don't want to be Elvis all my life. I want to be a space cowboy. And he's like, oh, okay. And which is, I love Carpenter's uh, a deal of directing because he's like the best director there is. It goes like this. You got, you've got, here you got Dr. Loomis. You got Jamie Lee Curtis. And, he, and, and, uh, of course, uh, I can't think of the guy who plays Dr. Loomis, but he's like going, I think that Dr. Loomis has gone through a self-awakening at this time, and I think he shoots Michael Myers, so he falls down and dies. And I think that would be the perfect way to end this film, Jamie Lee. Yes, I think, you know, he's got a point. Pleasance has got a point. I mean, he's a big actor from Britain and everything. What do you think, John? Uh, Sounds good. Let's shoot it. And that's that was it. And And, of course, Lucas knows that's kind of how my directing is, too, right? Right. Kind of like that, isn't it, Riley? Right, right, right. <laughs> hey, Lucas, get, get, do your impersonation. Uh, Lucy. Uh, Lucas, do my imper- do your impersonation of me directing. <laughs> I want you to do all of the things, but no things ready now. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite is, my favorite is directing Lucas's, uh, I want you, I want you to, uh, do something new, so don't watch anything new. But I want you to watch something new to find out what not to do, okay? That's that's my favorite. Right. All right, line for that. Yeah, Pacific Rim 2. I want you to do this. I know you have no idea what you're doing. 
but I don't want you to watch anything for reference. Just do it. Cause, cause yeah. I, yeah. I, well, one thing, I don't want people to think that I stole from somebody else. That, that, yeah. that, that's my biggest fear. Well, here's the thing. In any kind of form of art, you want to use references not only to, to get an idea of what not to do, but also get an idea of what works. Right. So I disagree if, because if you of Yukapon and the pink background. Can I discuss Yukapon and the pink background? Oh, was it? No, man. no, Yukapon in the pink and the blue I'm background. I'm going to have to get my pants on for this. Hold All on. right, blue, blue background. All right, everybody had a hissy fit because I filmed Yukapon with a blue background, right? All right, so what happens, Hyuna or one of these other K-pop stars was wearing pink and had a blue background. So, screw you. <laughs> that was my day to say, look, I was the first one said pink, blue background, deal with it. That's you, cute. What the hell's the problem? The yeah. problem was everybody thought that blue background did not go with the pink, that it that was the issue. That was a technical criticism. Said I had to go back to film school because the blue background did not match the pink outfit. But then the K-pop videos came out with the pink girls in the pink wearing the blue background. So screw you. Total <laughs> thing that works. Like, screw them. Right. Exactly. It's like them saying that Lucas would not make a good little boy. It's the best boy. That's right. And we're not talking about the grip. All right. All right. So where were we at on the movies? All right. So uh, we, we've talked about similar plots. We talked about villains. We talked about heroes. We can talk about how shitty his tattoo is. Yes. Okay. That was the 80s, man. They really weren't good with those tattoo things. What was it effects. supposed to be? Is peace? No, it's supposed to be a snake, man. And it's supposed yeah. to be – and, and the <laughs> idea – it's, yeah, it's coming up out of his pants. It's a trouser snake. Right, exactly. It's straight that. up is a trouser snake. There you go. Like they, they could have, they, if they had put it on his arm, that would have made so much more sense. Right. Or chest. Or, yeah. or chest. Or his back. Or because he would never wear a shirt. He's allergic to shirts. But so. you guys, and again, this is that wink, wink that people that went above people's heads because, like, yeah. with these movies and is these movies are supposed to after you watch them kind of build your test drawn up and masculinity and that was a joke because it was like taking a wink at you know old westerns and all that you know because the guys you know when you watch an old western or karate film you'd be like beating each other's heads in out, out in the backyard if you were me like when i was a kid because i was raised up with brothers K kicking a plastic <laughs> bottle off of a test dummy so hard that it just completely blows out somebody's chest cavity right exactly you take a little drink and then we're deciding hey let's go out and shoot some so, um, so this stuff and, and so the snake is just like the best joke in the whole flipping film because we have to imagine where the flipping tell is at. Yes, yes, the whole time. <laughs> right, right, right. Where's the thing at? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I bro. I imagine that it doesn't continue past his waistline, it just stops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, that's the joke. That's a joke. This guy is so tough. That that's the whole idea. It's cartooned. Who's your daddy? 